direct flow is currently incurable. So for anyone who is unfamiliar, it's a progressive neurological or brain condition where the cells in a region of the brain called the basal ganglia basically drop off and stop producing a really important neurotransmitter uh, called dopamine. And that's used by the brain to help initiate and then control body movements. So symptoms of Parkinson's can include muscle rigidity, tremor, difficulty walking, and difficulty getting out of a chair, sort of initiating movements, depression, anxiety, difficulty swallowing, loss of sense of smell. It can look like Alzheimer's disease. It's not a lot of fun. It currently affects between 12 and 15 million people worldwide. And that's more common than prostate, bowel, and many other forms of cancer. And it's currently the world's fastest growing neurodegenerative disorder. So, now did you see that story on Channel 9 News recently about a new potential treatment for Parkinson's that was showing some very promising results in a proof of true. concept trial. Now apparently patients treated with the Symbix, I hope I've said that right, PD care laser, have returned to doing activities that they couldn't do since developing Parkinson's, things like playing the piano and returning to gardening. Some even had a return of their sense of smell. So I'm intrigued, what is PD Care Laser and how does it work? Wayne Markham is the CEO of Symbix and he's on the line. Wayne, hi, thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and happy holidays. Oh yeah, you too. Um, Wayne, this, this really is fascinating. I mean, how, how does it work? I, and, and I think the thing that I didn't really say in that intro is that we are not talking about pointing a laser at someone's head, are we? We're, we're going for no, a completely yeah. different part of the body. Explain this whole thing to us. Okay, well, well, it's not pointing the laser to the head, and it's a great place to start because if you think of some of the most innovative and exciting developments in medicine in the last few years, they would include a vaccine for the pandemic, which has been rolled out in record time. Two would be gene editing the amazing advancements we're making in understanding how to modify someone's DNA, which could be uh, the start of curing many incurable diseases. The third area would have to be the area we're in, which is the gut-brain axis. And that's the focal point for the Symbix PDK laser. You treat the gut to affect neurochemicals downstream or upstream, I guess if you're talking about the head, in the brain. So what we now have is a large body of research which uh, underscores the importance of the gut in moderating, initiating, and even controlling what we always believed were intractable chronic diseases. And Parkinson's is, is the, the area we're focused on, but there are many other uh, indications, including autism, depression, um, Alzheimer's disease. So we know that many of these diseases now start in the stomach and the stomach has its own nervous system called the enteric nervous system. And with the laser light, it's an infrared laser, which is a, a very benign, harmless uh, wavelength of light, we can change the microbes that live in the gut, which have a, an effect on the neurotransmitters that compensate if you have Parkinson's. And as you said, you don't make enough dopamine in the basal ganglia, which is in the deep cortex of the brain. So we change through using the infrared laser, we can change the composition of the bacteria in the gut and we can make more of a good bacteria, which metabolizes dopamine and serotonin. And the dopamine is really important, as you said, for motor uh, function. So walking, gait, fine motor skills, handwriting. These are all the things that are compromised in a Parkinson's patient, as well as some of the cognitive deficits. And that's really exciting for us because the traditional pharmaceutical medicines don't address the cognitive issues. And they would include uh, sleep, um, sleep quality. Many Parkinson's patients don't sleep well. They would include mood, irritability, executive thinking, um, constipation, um, sense of smell, and general initiative and mood. So it's almost acting like an antidepressant. We're making more dopamine and serotonin, which are feel-good hormones, 
and that's why many of our patients are experiencing very good relief. And it's not magic, it's biochemistry. It, what you are telling me is actually mind-blowing because it seems so simple um, to change the bugs that live in your guts. How different is the laser light beamed at the belly to changing your diet? Because we keep getting told that the diet influences the gut microbiome, but how is this different? It's a, it's a great question. So what we know from the peer-reviewed research is that there are a couple of different ways to change the gut microbiome. When we say gut microbiome, we just mean the colonies of billions and billions of bacteria and viruses that live that, that live with us. There are actually more bacteria than there are cells in our body. So we, we know this now. There's, there's copious research out there. So you can change the gut microbiome for the good and the bad. Things that change it for the worse or the bad would include antibiotics. So there is a wave of research coming which shows that antibiotics actually, in the long term, are, have, are very detrimental to our health. Even though in the short term, there's obviously a role, particularly in a very acute bacterial infection. So antibiotics can change it. Diet can change it. I'll come back to diet in a second. Probiotics can change it. And another uh, treatment which is much more invasive is fecal transplantation. And that can change your, your gut bacteria. Now, infrared light also changes gut bacteria, but it is not invasive. It is painless and it is quite simple to do. Our treatment would encompass using the laser for 20 minutes, roughly three times a week. Now, you can change it by diet, uh, but you know, you, you've got to be well informed, have the right amount of nutrition. And we haven't seen many studies, at least I haven't seen many studies, which identify the right diet, the right quality, the right quantity. We know broadly the Mediterranean diet is good for you, but we know now there are many animal models and now human trials with the infrared light to show that it actually has a much more immediate effect. So, so it is, a, it is a, um, a very safe laser approved for home use that is available and approved by the TGA and it is approved throughout Europe, through the, uh, the UK and the EU, and you can, and you can use it immediately. Um, diet, they're, they're, you know, dietitians have known this for many, many years, and the general public is just catching up. But if you ask me what the right amount and, and the, the different types of foods, uh, you need to speak to somebody who spent a lot of time uh, getting very smart in the area. We know about light. We know light is benign. It's effective. And the other thing uh, the light does, light is a source of vitamin D, as we all know. So you go out in the sun and you feel good immediately. Now, the light also in a Parkinson's person, they're typically vitamin D deficient. No matter how much supplementation they take, they don't get enough vitamin D. So um, the light helps metabolize the serotonin in the gut, which then becomes melatonin, and the melatonin affects your sleep or your circadian rhythm, so our patients are sleeping better. Um, so it's one of many uh, uh, variables that affect the microbiome, and it's a very exciting area because of this connection between the gut and the brain. So... What studies have you done so far on this specifically for Parkinson's disease? Well, the, the study we're most proud of is a study that was published in July of this year in the BMC Neurology uh, uh, Journal, which is a very, very well-regarded, peer-reviewed UK medical ne neurology journal. So you don't get a study published there unless it's peer-reviewed and approved by the editor and it's of sufficiently high quality. Now, the study uh, showed that the cohort that we followed, and it's now two years of data, the gains that the cohort made have been held or kept over two years, which is actually the most exciting part of the study because it's showing us that the light is proving to be neuroprotective. So if you improved, and, and let's remember, you said it, at the outset, this is a neurodegenerative condition where people deteriorate at various paces over time. It's very heterogeneous. Everyone's different. 
but everyone deteriorates over time. Our patients are holding their gains. So over a two year period, if you improved your fine motor skills, you did not lose them, which, which is amazing. And, and, that, and that's something I wanna reinforce, particularly patients who are actually out there using the device. They might not be super responders in terms of improving immediately in certain areas, but they aren't deteriorating. So that, that's one point. Got it. So they, um, it might freeze time. So if you if you diagnosed Parkinson's early, exactly, got it. Exactly. So, so is this? I mean, you mentioned the brain gut access in a raft of conditions. What, another neurodegenerative condition that is completely incurable, and that a lot of our healthy living listeners are are really worried about is Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia. Is there potential? for this kind of laser therapy to be used in other neurodegenerative diseases? Absolutely. And it all goes back to gut inflammation. Now, what we do know, we don't have trials in Alzheimer's just yet, and that's something we will focus on next year. However, our, our focus is Parkinson's. Now, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's intersect in an area where, you know, the Parkinson advanced Parkinson's patient might develop uh, dementia and it is due to these um, uh, misfolding of alpha synuclein or proteins in the brain um, and they're called um, um, well they, let's, let's, just, let's just move on they, they, yeah. they, they have these clumps of misfolded proteins in the brain and we know now that many of these misfolded proteins are influenced by gut bacteria and when somebody says they've got a leaky gut, or it, it was once thought to be quite psychosomatic, we know now leaky gut is a real thing. Leaky gut is effectively inflammation in the gut. Your cell junctions are no longer tightly held. You're leaking gut content, you're leaking bacterial content into the bloodstream, into the venous stream. Wayne, sorry, I'm just, it, it's Kaylee. So I'm just going to jump in there because we're bumping up against the news. I, I, we would love to get you back on the program again uh, another time to talk through this because it's fascinating. Is that okay? Absolutely. Wonderful. Thank you for that. We'll take a break on Healthy Living.